I regret to inform you that I am personally devaluing all of your amazing pack-pulled ultra-modern autographs. I'll explain to you why. Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for turning back in. I don't usually cover single comments on my videos, at least not a video entirely dedicated to one comment. But this one was special. This one blew my socks off a little bit when it came in kind of late last night, Sunday night. And I read it a bunch of times and I, I, repl I replied to the person, which I don't normally do, but it was card related. Normally my weird comments are political or they're, they're not about cards. They're just, they're just weird. This one was maybe the most bonkers card related comment I have ever received. And I had to do a response to it. I don't think this person is going to be watching my channel again, but if they are, I would love to hear from you. I responded to your comment asking you, what? I'm going to read the whole comment in full right now. And then, uh, and I printed it off. It, it's big. My printer just printed the whole thing in one big page. I feel like an old man. Like, look at this thing. So I'm going to read the whole thing and then we're going to break it down. This was on my Nolan Ryan. I uh, explained when I got this back, I, I sent it off to Jerry Koosman, and then I sent it off to Nolan Ryan Foundation, and then I sent it to PSA to get it authenticated and slabbed. And this person says, I'm sorry, but not sorry. To me, this is fake, as in you have ruined the very rare and special opportunity of meeting a celebrity, and in that very special moment, receiving one's autograph. If all anyone could do is just pay for an autograph, Everyone should do just that, and in turn, devalue the rare, amazing moments of pulling box break autos or in-person autos forever. So yes, to me, you have devalued that card to being worthless for your own greed and gain. <laughs> I, I'm at a loss here, so let's just break this down. I'm sorry, but not sorry. Okay, we're off to a good start here. We've, we've wiped out the, the entire beginning of this with c contradictory statements. To me, this is fake, as in you have ruined the very rare and special opportunity of meeting a celebrity. I, I ruined the very rare and special opportunity of meeting a celebrity. Uh, it is very rare. That's why I, I can't do it. I, I don't have an opportunity to meet Nolan Ryan or Jerry Koosman, so I have to mail it to them. Very common, something people have been doing for a century, at least. If you look back, Uncle Jimmy was doing it in the 1930s. So we know, the 30s or 40s, whatever, we know TTM autographs, through the mail autographs, have been happening forever. I'm not, I'm not doing anything unique here. I'm not special as much as my mom tells me I am. So I don't know how mailing a card to two players, which again, has been done at least hundreds of times on this one card, maybe thousands, ruins the opportunity of meeting a celebrity. But, but we continue. And in that very special moment, receiving one's autograph, I still received the autograph, I, I got to tell you, I actually don't care about meeting celebrities. I've never met a real celebrity before. I mean, I, I don't know, Mike, Mike Moynihan, Chris Sewell, those guys are celebrities. I haven't met a, like a Hollywood celebrity and don't care to. I, I'm a very staunch believer in don't ever meet your heroes. I know people will say, I met Ricky Henderson and he was amazing. I met Nolan Ryan and he was amazing. That's great. I would rather not meet them than meet them and have them ruin the experience. I'm sorry. You know what? I did meet Ted Williams. This, may, this might color my belief of not meeting your celebrities, your heroes. I had a very, very bad childhood experience meeting Ted Williams, and I don't want to meet celebrities anymore. So I, it, it could be a very special moment for you. That's great. I'm glad that you have very special moments with celebrities. I don't want them. You can have them. Enjoy. So we continue. If all anyone could do is just pay for an autograph, and and you can, and pretty much any, if you can afford it, you can pay for an autograph of 
a lot of different people. There are some people who don't do public signings and it's nearly impossible to ever get them to do and then there are some people that are outrageously priced like Sandy Koufax but they still make money because people people pay for them. If you can't afford it, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't afford a lot of them either. I'm not paying for a Mariano Rivera because he's like 300 bucks or something like that. Uh, th that's, I don't know what to say. So again, if, any, if all anyone could do is just pay for an autograph, everyone should just do it. Yes, yes, you should do it. If you can just pay for an autograph, you should do it. But then it gets weird. And in turn, devalue the rare, amazing moments of pulling box break autos or in-person autos forever. How does... Somebody got to explain this to me in, in the comments. How does getting this autographed by both of these guys devalue your 2024 Topps Update Jason Worth autograph? Help me understand that. I think... <laughs> here we go. Conflicting opinions here. I think the millions of ultra-modern autographs that are out there are devaluing the ultra modern autographs, the the rare pack pulled autographs, which aren't rare anymore, are devaluing themselves. When it when a rare occurrence becomes not rare, it's not rare or amazing, and they have devalued themselves. That's just my opinion. I'm open to yours, and again, if this person would like to respond back, I'd love to hear more about what they mean. But also, how do you pull an in-person auto? The rare, amazing moments of pulling box break autos or in-person autos. I don't get it. Maybe, that, maybe those are separate. Maybe they should have said the rare, amazing moments of getting an in-person auto or pulling box break autos. So I have devalued, maybe I haven't devalued the cards that are just saying I've devalued the moments. So if you're opening those packs and you're pulling autographs and you're feeling deflated, it's not because Fanatics has put millions of autographs in packs now. It has become, it's actually because I mailed this card to two players. I love how the blame is getting shifted from Fanatics to collectors. This is what they want. Fanatics wants you to blame me, to blame Mike Moynihan, to blame, uh, who knows, who else is doing this? Jake of Legends Never Die. Yeah, it's crazy. So we continue. So yes, to me, you have devalued that card to being worthless. This card, which I don't know what the value is, $1,000 maybe in financial value, is now worthless for my own greed and gain. What? <laughs> I'm not selling it have no intention of selling it. I think I made that pretty clear. It's now one of my best autographs that goes in my collection for decades. So what, how have I, deva, again, I have devalued this card for my own greed and gain. So I was greedy and I devalued it to being worthless. Could somebody please shed some light on what any of this means? Please. I'm, I'm flabbergasted by this completely bonkers response or, or, or comment. <laughs> if Fisher responds back to me, and this was their first comment on my YouTube channel, if they respond back to me, 
it'll probably be a newsletter post that I do. So make sure you're subscribed to my newsletter, junkwaxhero.com. I am eight subscribers away from a thousand. I also got a comment from a longtime subscriber, Forgerelli, asking me, have you ever considered doing a newsletter? Poking a little fun at me. I thought that was pretty funny because I'm pitching it all the time. You should subscribe to junkwaxhero.com. Now, if Fisher's response is equally or more bonkers, I will probably do another video because this is fun. Let me know if, if you have any thoughts, put in comments what you think Fisher means, and if this makes any sense to you at whatsoever, I would love to hear it. Love to hear an explanation that makes sense that we can all get behind. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you guys have a great week.